Hey guys, this is Ultimate Byte. So, yes, as Gary said, the Rust Linux server should work out of the box and it's working actually. So, that's why I released the LGSM script for Rust because I was waiting that game for so long to come back on Linux. Basically, this is a kind of a tutorial to show you how to install your server using LGSM and how to install Oxide, how to make the installation of Oxide easier during updates and to explain you how basically a Rust server works because I know it's a bit hard to find the information. It's, um, it's dispatched all around the web and it's pretty boring. So the French Ultimate Byte is gonna try to help. By the way, this is not a, a Linux tutorial, so you'd better do your homework about that. So basically, uh, install your packages, as always, your dependencies, then make a new user, here this is my uh, test user, and here, as I got many, a lot of stuff here, I'm in a subfolder, but of course you may not want to be in a subfolder. So you get your script and just to not forget it later, make it executable with chmod plus x rust server and here we go. Let's clear that shit. Edit rust server and now you're just gonna have to read stuff. So server name put whatever you like, whatever you like, your IP address, if you don't remember it, do like me, open a command prompt and ping your domain, and here you go, you'd better put that in place, because uh, you may have issues if you don't, uh, the ports, if you're running several servers, and I'm gonna go through running multiple servers later in the video, so stay tuned. Uh, I already got another server, so I'm gonna change the ports to get no conflicts. The Archon password, very important. Um, you'd better change it, really. Better change it, okay. Uh, max player, of course, uh, no description here, no comment. Uh, the seed and the word size, so this is the length of the map in meters. So here 4000, so just read the description. If you want to keep a save of a specific map, just re remember the seed. For example, whatever you like between that range and see if the map is good for you. Otherwise, stop the server, wipe the server, change the seed, start the server, and check again until you like the result. The save interval, the tick rate, and that's it. The last thing you may want to change is uh, the server identity. So I saw some dude not understanding how variables works. So here the service name, which is uh, used to start the server for LGSM, is also the same as the server identity. So if you want to change it, change the service name. How to do that? Press Ctrl W and search for service name and here you go you can change it by the way it's not really useful to change it for now so let's just keep it that way and uh, change it only if you know what you're doing so let's uh, save this control x yes enter of course and then let's install rust server 
So just run the script with the command install. And yes, you want to continue. It's uh, checking the dependencies just uh, to make sure you're not retarded or you don't have issues with uh, installing some dependencies. And then that boring step of downloading Steam CMD and uh, setting folders, setting app ID, and everything is automatic. So thank you, Daniel, if you're watching this. <laughs> You are allowing us to do that. <clears throat> As you can see, the install process is pretty fast. It's going to, of course, depend on your server speed. And here we go. Was the install successful? Yes. You want to install a game server query? Yes, it's going to help um, monitoring the server. If the server is still started but doesn't respond to ping, then uh, the game server query is going to uh, allow you to reboot automatically the, the server. So uh, right now we could start the server and just uh, check that everything's OK. So one thing that is a bit different with uh, Rust is the logging system because, uh, the, as some of you may know, the game doesn't offer a proper console. Here is what the console looks like. No information at all. So you're not going to use that, of course. You're going to use the logs. And to get the game, the, the last log, just cat server files game whatever dot log and you see the last log so here we can see the map being generated everything is being all right you can do that several times just to to see how it's going and here it's ready connected to steam ready to welcome players so let's stop that for now And let's uh, start it again, because I want to show you something. As you can see, the log manager is moving the logs to your log server, which you can see here. By the way, the functions here are the functions of LGSM. Log are the logs generated by LGSM server files are your Rust servers. And uh, SteamCMD is a SteamCMD used to download the files and to update your server. And what I wanted to show you is uh, when you start the server, it, it takes the last log and put it back in log and in server. Here you can find the last, the previous log. And the last log, the current log, is always in uh, server files. So cat server files, game, game log, whatever it is. Just type game, then tab, and it's going to show you it. Perfect. So now let's have a look at what is in server files. Here are the log and the game stuff. For us dedicated data, I will contain most of Oxide stuff, but also in server folder and in the server files folder too, you're going to see. Um, so in server, there's an important thing, your server identity. Here it's called Rust server as the server's name, as we saw previously. So CD Rust server, and you can see the CFG folder, some logs, some saves. And there is going to be the Oxide stuff you want to put in. The plugins and uh, their configurations and data. So for now, let's go into CFG. And here you can remove the LGSM default if you want, because it's already been copied to server.cfg. And 
and so inside of it you got some basic stuff that you should really configure like the description the server image server link and some stuff that you may want to change for in-game in settings But now we don't care. Now you probably want to install Oxide because a Rust server without Oxide is a bit sad. So to do that, you got the manual way or um, the easiest way by using my script right here. So it's pretty easy to use. You're gonna see. So just make a new folder for it because it's gonna make uh, some files and you don't want it mixed with the rest. So I'm cut here zip. And get the script. Make it executable and edit it. So basically your target deer is going to be the server files folder here. So home in my case, server dev, rust, server files. Pretty easy. Then uh, the rest is going to be fine. If you want to use that as a cron job, just put the prompt mod to off, of course. What else? Here you're gonna need the zip link. So this is pretty hard to find right now. You have to do some googling, but uh, I'm gonna provide the link in the video description, of course. So you wanna find Rust for Linux. View row. It's gonna start the download. Let's stop it. Then here you get the link that you can put here. I'm gonna provide the link. And right now you could uh, just start the script and it would uh, update automatically the, the thing. But uh, one cool thing I like to do is uh, to automate the stop of the Rust server and the start. So just right here after the prompt put Home, in my case, server dev, rest, rest, server, stop. And then at the end, start it again. Home, server dev, rest, rest, server, start. Hopefully. I didn't make a writing mistake. And then that's it. You run the zip updater. You confirm. It stops Rust server. Perfect. Extracting, copying, removing, backuping the script if you need to roll back for some reason. And then we're gonna check our logs. Oxide. Oxide is loading. Oxide is loading everything. Perfect. Everything is great. And you can see here there's a new Oxide folder. So that's it. We got a Rust server running with Oxide. We got a script to update Oxide. Okay, so after that, you may want to use Rusty, which is a, an aircon tool. Of course, your information to connect can be found here. You just run Rust server details. And here you got the ports, you got your IP. You should already know your IP, by the way, but the, Ar the Archon port is listed here. So then it's gonna be pretty easy. The password is set by yourself. Those stuff 
are set here, by the way. The icon port and the icon password. Pretty easy. Then you're gonna have to make some research to give you admin rights and manage stuff. But uh, I guess you pretty much have all the keys. So now, if you're a bit crazy, pretty enthusiastic, you wanna run multiple servers. Uh, what's gonna happen to you? Even if you're running multiple users, it's gonna say player already running. And this is quite boring, so why does that happen? Uh, it happens because the Rust executable is gonna check if his name is already run on any user. So we first find a workaround for that, which was pretty boring, included renaming stuff and uh, making sim links and everything it was pretty boring. So we find a better way, which is to block other users from uh, seeing your stuff. Uh, so basically, if, if I run ps aux n, I can see what I run as me, as a user, but uh, without the modification, I can also see everything from any other user of the machine. And this is a huge security issue. So, because you can see the Archon password, you can see the Steam APIs from, uh, let's say, uh, Gary's mod servers that use it, or you can see the tokens, you can see many, many sensitive information, so you'd better block that anyway, even if you plan only running one server. I have to thank a lot uh, Shedar Lug uh, for helping me, or even finding the solution himself, and then uh, we found out together the, the easiest way. So how to do that? So basically, I wrote the solution here, so it's quite easy. Just log in as root. Run that command. And then it's fixed. You can run multiple servers. <laughs> um, you should do that anyway. If you plan to reboot your server someday, just edit proc and you're gonna have proc defaults, just had hide PID equal to, equal one works too, but uh, equal to is even more secure. And that's it, you're done. You can roll multiple servers and you gain safety on your machine. So guys, uh, this is it. Um, I think you got all the keys to make your server if you need the help with uh, Oxide, they got a pretty good community. If you got any trouble, just post. By the way, we opened the server not that long ago. So if you're French, when you want to come with us, don't hesitate, it's going to be pretty damn cool. And uh, if you want to donate to help us continue, don't hesitate to do so. Would be very welcome. And that said, um, I wish you guys a very nice game. Uh, I'm sorry if it took a little long, but uh, I had a lot of things to say. And I was a bit tired, so sorry if I sound a bit lazy. Hope you found it uh, helpful, guys. And uh, have a nice game.